Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We greet you in the name of the Lord Yate and Ahaya Lahayim. Uh, I'm your brother Zakwa, and this is your brother Kasafo. Uh, we know if anyone is a new viewer to the channel, we welcome you. Uh, some of the names might not be very um, um, what's the word for it, Kasa? Um, may not be very familiar to you. Uh, if you yes. if you have any questions pertaining any names, we do have videos. Uh, we will link them in the description boxes, uh, or um, you can visit the email. We should have the the link down below in the description um, for your for your so that you can gain the understanding of what we're actually speaking about. Um, it's not what we're talking about pertaining in this lesson, so we're not going to spend uh, a great deal a uh, great amount of time dealing with it. We're going to go into how shall we pray? This is the part two. And this is a very important lesson because prayer is powerful. That's why Christ himself prayed so much because the power of prayer delivered so much in so many different instances. So with no further ado, Brother Kasafo, you have any uh, announcements that you want to bring forth today? Yes. The Feast of Dedication is coming next weekend. All right. The Sunday, November 29th, is the Feast of Dedication. The first day, so, right? Yes, the first day of the week. When the sun goes down and night falls, come. When night comes on Saturday night, that is the beginning of the Feast of Dedication, where when we may rejoice, cook, we take the day off because it's a Sabbath, it's a feast day. Put in your request for the day off. For those of you who have to work on the weekends, and pray Ahaya be gracious to deliver you. And I uh, hope it's enjoyable for everyone. That was important. And um, hopefully Ahaya prospers to get, make it there and get to keep the feast. Now, that feast is actually eight days long. So you have the first day, which goes on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Um, what day is that? You know, the... the you know, the month and day. Oh, for the, when the feast starts. What, which day were you asking? The Sunday, the first day. The feast day. starts 11, Sunday, the first day, that's 11.29. So when the sun goes down on November 28th, when his nightfall comes on November 28th, that's the start of the feast. And it's a holy convocation that day wherein no work may be done besides cooking what we may eat. And we do that until the sun goes down on November 29th and the night comes. That's the end of the first day of the feast. It continues for eight days until the next weekend comes. And that next weekend, the date is... Um, that date will be... Where's my calendar? <laughs> <laughs> that date will be um, Saturday, no, December 5th. December 5th, that is the Feast of New Moon. It comes in the midst of the Feast of Dedication. So that next Saturday, after, after the weekend of November 28th and 29th, that next weekend will be the that Saturday, which is December 5th, will be the Feast of New Moon. And then that Sunday, December 6th, will be the Feast of, of dedication. dedication, the last day of the Feast. Right. right. And we'll do a short video on that for to get, to get more thorough about it. Just want to give people an early notice so you can put in your requests with work and also make your preparations before the weekend comes in for the Feast to come. Amen. Amen, brother. All right. All so, right. Getting into building on our foundation, we learned about prayer in the first video. We, we know from the initial lesson some foundational things concerning prayer. One, we must pray three times per day, according to Psalms 55 and 17. 
and face Jerusalem from our respective locations in the world to be heard according to Solomon's prayer in 1 Kings 8. The testimonies of the, the testimonies show the practices of the believers that they did these same things to attest to what we learned. Daniel did it, though he lived in Babylon. Les, can you read Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, please? Sure. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to, before Elohim. As, as he did aforetime. So this was the custom of believers. Three times a day. Towards Jerusalem. Giving thanks. Before our Allahayim. And giving thanks is very important. As we're going to see as we build. Also we learn from the initial lesson. We do not use vain repetition. But we pray the Lord's prayer. According to the teaching of the Lord. To his disciples on how to pray. Can you read Luke chapter 11, verse 1, please? Yes. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And when you read the rest of that chapter, he taught them the Lord's Prayer. All right. So that's why we pray the Lord's Prayer. That This is actually a command that we have to fulfill. Right. We have an example by Thomas, the apostle. Can you read the Acts of Thomas, chapter 144, please? This is an excerpt out of that chapter. The Acts of Thomas, verse 144. And having fulfilled these sayings, Judas arose and prayed this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as in heaven, so upon earth. And forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. My Lord and Elohim, hope and confidence and teacher, you have taught me to pray this. Behold, I pray this prayer and have fulfilled your commandment. Be with me unto the end. There we see. It is. It was a commandment to be fulfilled, and therefore, this is why we are to do so. We also are to pray always that we are worthy to escape the tribulation to come, to stand before Yahshua Christ according to his command in Luke chapter 21, verse 36. We had read that in the last lesson. You can refer back. If, you, if this is the first video you're watching, please watch the first lesson. <laughs> Um, we also learn to pray without ceasing according to his instruction in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. And we need to add that in everything, give thanks so that we may do his will. And we already read what Daniel did. He would pray before his Allah and give thanks. So we know that what we're being commanded to do is to help us partake in the customs and traditions of the believers. Uh, can you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, please? Sure. Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of Allah in Christ Yahshua concerning you. And that's what Allah wills, and may we, we be strengthened to do so. And when we pray, forgive if we have an art with anyone, so that we may be forgiven according to his commands in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. We had read that in the last lesson, and these are foundational things for us concerning prayer. Now, let's build on this foundation through Scripture. Can you read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, please? I will therefore that men pray everywhere. So regardless of where we are in the world, we ought to pray. And, wh and when shall we pray? Can you read Psalms 55 and 17, please? Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. Those are the three appointed times, evening, morning, and noon. The appointed times to prayer to be kept by men everywhere at the respective times in their respective areas wherein they dwell. The testimonies guide us to know we have to prevent the sun rising to give thanks and pray unto Allah regardless of where we are. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 28, please? Yes. 
that it might be known that we must prevent the sun to give thee thanks. And as the day spring, pray unto thee. That, was, that, that gives us further instruction on morning time. We need to pray before the sun actually comes up, not just during the morning. All right. Preventing the sun in the morning sunrise to give thanks and pray is done because the angels are gone up. They go up to give account to Allah Hayyam at those times, as we discussed in the last lesson when we read the Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 7. Also, we are commanded to be sure to bless him at the sun setting as well before the night comes. So further building on, not only do we pray before night comes, we also bless him as the sun is going down. Can you read Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 7? This is a, a excerpt out of that chapter, please. Uh, you want to touch on exactly what it looks like to, pr to prevent the sun and at day spring pray unto him? If you'd like to, sure. Uh, or if you'd like me to. When, uh, when it says prevent the sun from rising, you don't want the sun to fully rise over the horizon. You want you want to pray when the, the orange glow starts to come in the morning. So before the sun actually peaks over the horizon, you want to pray when that when the glow, the orange glow of the sun is coming. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Apocalypse right. of Paul, chapter 7. Behold, ye sons of men, the creature is subject to Allah, but the human race alone sins. For this cause, therefore, ye sons of men, bless Ahaya Allah unceasingly, every hour and every day, but more especially when the sun has set. For at that hour all the angels proceed to Ahaya to worship him and to present the works of men, which every man has wrought from the morning to the evening, whether good or evil. So that's important for us to know and get our praise going when we see that sun is set. That's what we, our account of our life is being. We pray, we confess our faults in our prayer, we forgive those that have sinned against us, and we forgive if we had an issue with anyone, and we bless Sahaya in hopes that he have mercy upon us. Now, you notice we the sun plays such a major role in things, as Zach, I even mentioned how you have to know when to pray in regards to the sun rising. The sun plays a major role, a major part in keeping track of the appointed times for prayer because Ahaya appointed the sun to divide the light from the dark on the earth and to track days and times and years and etc. Can you read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, please? Sure. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And it divideth the light from the darkness and for prosperity that all things which prosper which shoot and grow on the earth that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Um, there we see why the sun plays such a major role. You can also reference the book of Enoch chapter 72 to see that it's by the sun that time was also according to the, the hours of the day and the hours of the night, well, as was shown the law of the luminaries to Enoch. So regardless of where you are in the world, like for some people who live, we have a brother who lives up in Finland. When that sun goes below the horizon and rises from the horizon, he can still make a count of when it's time to pray. Now, touch, continue building on this. So according to the scriptures, our times to pray, the evening, the morning, and the noon, is according to the sun. People in their respective areas on, on the earth ought to pray at the, appoint, the three appointed times when they reside, not based on any specific location in the earth. Go by the rising and setting of the sun. The people we have, we can look in the scriptures to see that the people continued praying at the appointed times in the New Testament even. The apostles continued to do it when in Jerusalem. Can you read Acts chapter 3 verse 1, please? Yeah. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. 
Now, the ninth hour is the last hour of the day S during certain seasons of the year. This understanding is from the book of Enoch that we had just mentioned, where they're like in the spring, there's nine parts day and nine parts night. For example, to understand when it's talking of the ninth part, the ninth hour is referring to the last hour before sunset. I mean, before the sun goes down completely, that's the evening prayer time. The converts of the Gentiles prayed at their appointed times as well. Can you read Acts chapter 10, verse 30, please? And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. and Thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of Elohim. So there you see, believers of all nations did it. Thomas, the apostle, continued to pray at the appointed times, even in India. Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 1, this excerpt out of chapter 1, please? And we portioned out the regions of the world in order that each one of us might go into the region that fell to him by lot and to the nation to which the Lord had sent him. By lot, India fell to Judas Thomas, also called Did Didymus. So that was the apostles. They had they got their portions of where to go. And Thomas had to go to India. And let's read what Thomas was doing in India in Acts chapter 3. Excerpt, please. The Acts of Thomas chapter 3. On the following morning, the apostle prayed and entreated the Lord, saying, I go wherever you wish, O Lord Yache. Your will be done. Thomas was commanded to pray early in the morning in India as well. Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 29, excerpt, please? And when night fell, he slept. The Lord came and stood at his feet. Excuse me, the Lord came and stood at his head, saying, Thomas, rise early and bless all of them. After your prayer and the ministry, go by the eastern road two miles, and there I will show you my glory. For by your going shall many take refuge with me, and you shall bring to light the nature and power of the enemy. There we see he actually giving him the command to rise early and bless. And he said, after your prayer and your ministry, because he would pray in the mornings. Um, you can read the rest of that chapter to see that he had rose up and prayed like the Lord told him. He now also when in Rome, the apostle Peter continued to give thanks at the appointed times. Acts of Peter, chapter 33, please. Now Peter was in Rome rejoicing in the Lord with the brethren and giving thanks night and day. For the multitude... We know what times those was. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. We well, know what times those were night and day. Nope. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> for the multitude which was brought daily under the holy name by the grace of the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. The believers there in Rome also continue to pray at the appointed times so that we may know we still pray at the appointed times regardless of our location in the earth. Acts of Peter, chapter 21, please. And when the ninth hour was fully come, they rose up to make prayer. Daniel did it Praise too. Lord. Excuse me. He did. You're right. He did it. Even when he was in a broad in Babylon, as we read earlier, that was one of the first scriptures we read. <laughs> now, concerning facing Jerusalem, regardless of where we are on the earth, we face Jerusalem to make our supplications at the appointed times. Just like Daniel did in Babylon, as Zachar said. And also, we have an example of Sarah of the tribe of Naphtali. She did it, though she was living in Media, which today is Iran. Can you read Tobit chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, please? Then she prayed toward the window and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, my Elohim. And thy holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. And now, O Lord, I set my eyes and my face toward thee. There we see she set her eyes and her face toward him. We know through scripture, his eyes are set on Jerusalem, according to the root, uh, according to Deuteronomy chapter 11. So when she set her face and eyes towards him, she looked toward the holy city and she was to the east of Jerusalem. 
as you can see, she had to actually look west in order to look towards Jerusalem so we can understand that regardless of where we are, we have to look towards Jerusalem. Whereas Daniel, he had to look, what, southwest to look towards Jerusalem. So hopefully that helps in understanding find which way is pointed towards Israel, All right? Now some more admonitions on prayer. Second Clement, chapter two, verse two, please. And in that he said, cry aloud, now that travail is not. He mean of this, let us not, like women in travail, grow weary of offering up our prayers with simplicity to Allah. So let us not grow weary and let us keep our prayers with simplicity. And this is what we are commanded. Can you read Sirach chapter 7, verse 10? Be not faint-hearted when thou makest thy prayer. And neglect not to give alms. All right. Be not weak to pray. Let us not be afraid or get weary in prayer with simplicity. And we are to ask for things according to his will that we may receive it. Can you read First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, please? And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah. And if Continue, we please. and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. So therefore, we have to be sure to ask according to his will. All right, and uh, ask in the name of the holy and beloved Son of Allah. I am John fourteen and thirteen and fourteen, please. And whatsoever ye ask, excuse me, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. And it's interesting, Zachar, you mentioned the name of the Son and the, the names that may not be familiar. The name Yache is spelled with three letters in the Hebrew language, and we have testimony that that name is the name by which he is invoked or in which he is brought down um zach you happen to have the testament of uh solomon with you yeah i have it uh just give me one moment to pull it up all right i apologize where am i going in it 57 chapter 57 okay and while you get it i'll touch on that name. The name Yach is the name of salvation because it's the name above every name according to Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 showing that that name was above every other name. So no one else could have had the same name or else that would make the name up there with his name. And then Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says that there's no name given under heaven, no other name given under heaven wherein we might let me make sure I said that right. We must be safe. Don't want to misquote that. I thought it was real interesting because he says, um, he said, if you ask anything that's in his will, let me see. According, it said, if we ask anything according to his will, it was a great precept for the John 14 verses because you actually have to know what his will is. To ask. <laughs> <laughs> and John 7 and 17 said, if any man do his will, he shall know the doctrine. So it's a process. Right. You're learning him. You're learning him to know what pleases him so that you can ask accordingly. So as Zach well finds that scripture in the New in Testament of Solomon, Acts 4 and 12 said, Neither is there salvation in any other. For well, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So no one else was given that name, and that name is above every name. That's why his name could not be Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, Yahawashai, Yeshua, all the renditions of Joshua, all the renditions of Isaiah, like Yashaya, and all the renditions of Ishi like Yeshaya, these could not be his name because these are the names of other Israelites. But the name Yache is the root 
as he said in Revelations 22 and 16, I am the root. And the importance of this name to invoke him, because he said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do it. When we get to the Testament of Solomon, we're going to get witness from the, the spirits that Solomon was talking to, to know that it's the three letters by which we bring him down. And those three letters is Yache, Y S H. And the spelling is the, the Yode, the Chin, and the Iyin in the Hebrew letters. That's the only name that's actually spelled with three letters as opposed to these, the other, the other names that people are using, not knowing that it's not the name of the Savior. Um, did you happen to find it yet, Zachwa? I'm here. I'm at Testament of Solomon, chapter 57. All right. Well, verse 57, sorry. Um, okay. And I adore, and I adored Ahia Elohim of Israel, and bade another demon present himself. And there came before me a spirit in woman form that had a head. Oh, I get it. I'm sorry. Is it 52? I think I gave the wrong one. It might be. Apologize. Yeah, it's it's uh fifty two. Sorry right. about that. Uh the Testament of Solomon verse fifty two. So I said to him, I adjure thee in the name of Elohim Sabawata or Sabot, to tell me by what name thou art frustrated along with thy host. And this and this was an evil demon now. Right. This was the legion that we saw in the, that got put into the pigs. All right, continue, please. And the spirit answered me, the great among men, who is to suffer many things at the hands of men, whose name is the figure 644, which is Emmanuel. He that is, is speaking of Yachi. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, brothers. Okay. Zachary, You're right. Just so brothers and sisters understand, that is Yachi. He's the one that's going to suffer many things. That's the name by which this demon is bound. And he told his names, the figure of 644, which is Emmanuel. We know Yache is Emmanuel, as Matthew said that he shall be called Emmanuel. He it is who hath bound us, and who will then come and plunge us from the steep under water. He is noised abroad in the three letters which bring him down. He is noise abroad in the three letters which bring him down. The three letters is Yache. The demon also knew that's his name. And if with the reference Matthew, they came unto him, begging him not to destroy them. These demons, they knew already what was going to come to pass as they mentioned he was going to cast them over the steep. So that is important scriptural reference to understand that the name Yache is the true name of salvation. And that's the true name we ought to pray on, pray in and pray for our salvation to come by. And we encourage you brothers and sisters to pray and ask Ahaya Alahayam, ask the father to reveal the true name of his son. We trust that he would be gracious to do so. Interesting. He said that they, the, the, the legion, um, pretty much foreshadow what was to come and say that he was going to throw them over the steep. And that's exactly when he put them into the swine, they ran over the steep. So it's, it's just it's just further edific, edifying, you know. Yes. Yes, it is. They had to obey his command. They, couldn't go, they knew what was to come. Right. So there... We have some understanding of the name Yache and why that's whose name we ought to ask for things according to his will that we may receive it. Now, continuing in our exhortation on prayer, we also ought to make sure that we don't use much babbling when we pray. Can you read Sirach chapter 7, verse 14, please? Use not many words in the multitude of elders, and make not much babbling when thou prayest. Continue to Sirach chapter 18, verse 23, please. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself, and be not as one that tempteth the Lord. 
And let, let's understand what we need to pay attention to to make sure we don't tempt the Lord. Continue, please. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. In the time of vengeance, when he shall turn away his face. Having this in mind, knowing the judgment to come, we confess our sins and don't come to prayer with an evil conscience, lest we tempt the Lord. Can you read Barnabas chapter 19, verse 12, please? Thou shalt confess thy sins. Thou shalt not betake thyself to prayer with an evil conscience. This is the way of light. Amen. That gives us edification as to how we avoid tempting the Lord. Let's get an exhortation by the teachings of the, the apostles of our Lord for further understanding on who we should be praying for. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, please. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. It's for everyone. We don't leave anyone out. Continue, please. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all holiness and honesty. Amen. So we even pray for those like I'm here in America to pray for the those in power, that I have be gracious to turn their hearts. And all we ought to do the same in wherever we dwell, because that's the will of Allah. Continue, please. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of Allah, our Savior. Mm -hmm. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? It is for that purpose. Allah would that all men would be saved, and we have to walk in that compassion, praying for all. Continue, please. For there is one Allah and one mediator between Allah and men, the man, Christ Yache. Amen. Continue, please. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Continue, please. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So there we have exhortation. We pray for everyone. And also we pray lifting up holy hands. So brothers and sisters, when we pray, we, pr we pray with our hands up. Some of you might raise them all the way to the roof. <laughs> raise the roof if you, <laughs> that, 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 that's the position you're in. But we lift up holy hands in our prayers. We don't, according to scripture, that's how we pray as far as we will lift our hands up for prayer with in reverence and worship. Now, men everywhere in their respective locations must pray with lifting up holy hands for all men. Now, it's important that we also pray without wrath and doubting because this causes our prayers not to be heard. Let's get understanding on how these things affect our prayer. Can you read Sirach, chapter 27, verse 30, please? Malice and wrath, even these are abominations, and the sinful man shall have them both. So as you, as we work to overcome these spirits like malice and wrath, let it not stay with us, though they may come upon us. Can you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, please? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And now we understand how we can't let the sun go down upon our wrath because before the sun goes down, we have to go pray and confess our faults. We have to forgive anyone that we may have ought with, and we ought to be there blessing and praising Ahaya. So the sun shouldn't be going down upon our wrath or else we'll be in transgression. Eventually, as one is growing through prayer and focus on staying away from the spirit of wrath or whatever evil spirit may be working against us, Eventually, we'll learn to abstain from it altogether. Please, because this is a commandment for us. Psalms 37, verse 8 and 9, please. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. 
fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Ahia, they shall inherit the earth. Knowing that those that wait upon Ahia shall inherit the earth, therefore let us go on to the admonitions of our Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, please. All bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen. And we do these things because, Ephesians 4 and 30, please. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. These things grieve the Spirit, but the works, the good works that bring cheer to the Spirit are, Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's why Yahshua told us when we pray, forgive, that we may be forgiven. These were things that will help chair the Spirit in us. And in that forgiveness, we are exhorted according to Testament of God, chapter 6, verse 3 to, seven, three to um, 5, and then 6 to 7, please. All right. Testament of God, chapter 6, verse 3. Love ye therefore one another from the heart. And if a man sin against thee, cast forth the poison of, of hate and speak peaceably to him. And in thy soul hold not guile. And if he confess and repent, forgive him. But if he deny it, do not get into a passion with him. Least catching the poison from thee, he take to swearing, and so thou sin doubly. And though he deny it, and yet have a sense of shame when reproved, Give over reproving him. But he who denieth may repent, so as not again to wrong thee. Yea, he may also honor thee, and fear and be at peace with thee. And if he be shameless and persist in his wrongdoing, even so forgive him from the heart, and leave to Allah the avenging. That's what we're called unto. We commit ourselves unto Allah Now, let's look at doubting. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 10, please. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 10, verse 1. Put away sorrow from thyself, saith he. For she is the sister of doubtful mindedness and of angry temper. How, sir, say I, is she the sister of these? For angry temper seems to me to be one thing, doubtful Doubtful mindedness, another. Sorrow, another. That was... This is key for us. Right. Uh, this is key. Go. Paul gave us understanding, avoid wrath and doubting. But now the angel of repentance is revealing to Hermas how sorrow works with them both. All right. Continue, please. Thou art a foolish fellow, saith he, and perceivest not that sorrow is more evil than all the spirits. And it's most fatal to the servants of Allah. And behold, all the spirits destroy the man and crushes out the Holy Spirit and yet again saves it. This is key to pay attention to, brothers and sisters. It's sorrow is beyond all the spirit. I mean, and beyond all the spirits, sorrow destroys a man and crushes out the Holy Spirit and yet again saves it. Continue, please. I, sir, say I. And without understanding, and I understand not these parables, for how it can crush out and again save, I do not comprehend. Hear now, senseless man, saith he, how sorrow crushes out the Holy Spirit and again saveth it. When a man of doubtful mind sets his hand to any action and fails in it owing to his doubtful mindedness, grief at this entereth into the man and grieveth the Holy Spirit, and crusheth it out. Then again, when angry temper cleaveth to a man concerning any matter, and he is much embittered, excuse me, and he is much embittered, again sorrow entereth into the heart of the man that was ill-tempered, and he is grieved at the deed which he hath done, and repenteth that he did evil. This sadness, therefore, seemeth to bring salvation, because he repenteth at having done the evil. So both the operations sadden the spirit. 
first, the double mind saddens the spirit because it succeeded not in its business. And the angry temper again because it did what was evil. Thus both are saddening, saddening, excuse me, thus both are saddening to the Holy Spirit. The doubtful mind and the angry temper. That's why we have to stay away from wrath and doubting so that we don't sadden the spirit and sorrow, which would cause the spirit to be crushed and depart. Continue, please, brother. Put away, therefore, from thyself sadness, and afflict not the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in thee. Least happily, Amen. Least happily he intercede with Elohim against thee and depart from thee. We don't want her to intercede against Elohim and depart from us. Continue, please. For the spirit of Elohim that was given unto this flesh endureth not sadness, neither constraint. Therefore, clothe thyself in cheerfulness, which hath favor with Elohim always, and it's acceptable to him, and rejoice in it. For every cheerful man worketh good, and thinketh good, and despiseth sadness. Please. But the sad man is always committing sin. In the first place, he committeth sin, because he grieves the Holy Spirit, which was given to the man being a cheerful spirit. And in the second place, by grieving the Holy Spirit, he doeth lawlessness, and that he doeth not intercede with neither confess unto Elohim. For the intercession of a sad man hath never at any time power to ascend to the altar of Elohim. This is why we have to be full of cheer, so that our prayer and our intercession may ascend to the altar of Elohim. Continue, please. Wherefore, say I, if not the intercession of him that is saddened ascend to the altar? Because, he saith, sadness is seated at his heart. The sadness mingled with the intercession doeth not suffer the intercession to ascend here to the altar. For as vinegar when mingled with wine in the same vessel hath not the same pleasant taste, so likewise sadness mingled with the Holy Spirit hath not the same intercession. Therefore, cleanse thyself from this wicked sadness, and thou shalt live unto Elohim. Yea, and all they shall live unto Elohim, who shall cast away sadness from themselves, and clothe themselves in all cheerfulness. Amen. 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 The exhortation help us to understand how to pray, and also... And staying in cheerfulness, even when we see that we've done something wrong, we should be cheerful because Ahaya is reproving us so that we would not come to the fullness of sin. Right. That's worthy of thanksgiving. That's how we stay in chair and in the meek and humble spirit, enduring this growth process with patience and a good heart. So that's an exhortation to give a more full understanding of how we ought to pray. Because prayer is essential for us in these times to come. As Yache said, we have to pray always that we be accounted worthy, to, that we be, be delivered from the evils, the things to come, and accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. All right. Anything else, Brother Zachwa? Um, if you don't have any of the books like Clement or Barnabas or um, any of the other books that we went into, The Shepherd of Hermes, um, please visit the website. The link should be in the description box. And uh, you can download all these books for free. And um, if you have an iPhone, you can just download them to books, and they'll literally be in the books of your phone. Uh, for Android, I'm not very sure exactly where they would go. Uh, they will probably still be in your folders. I'm not sure if there's any app that you can download to arrange your books. Um, but seeing how Android is picking up nowadays, you should be able to have something that, that goes with it. Um, but nonetheless, all those books are for free on the website and much more information. So please visit the website. It's, it's a great tool. Um, yeah. Remember the feast is next weekend. <laughs> feast of Dedications. Uh, that was, yes. what's that, uh, 1129? 
Yep, November 29th is the when it starts on when the sun goes down and the night comes on November 28th is when the feast of dedication starts. And that first day is a holy convocation when we do uh, no work. So we have to make our requests off for work as soon as possible so we can be free. And we are, we can do our cooking because it's a holy convocation. It's an eight day feast. So it runs all the way until December 6th. When that, so during the week before December 5th, before the Sabbath comes, we have to make all our preparations, get our provisions, because that Saturday is actually the Feast of New Moon that starts when the sun goes down and the night comes. When the night comes on December 4th, that night is the start of the Feast of New Moon when winter season starts. That's a feast where we cook and rejoice in Allah for, the, for his mercy. And then the night of December 5th, when that comes, that is the start and the last day of the Feast of Dedication, All right? Celebrating the deliverance of the rededicating of the temple during the days of Maccabees and the deliverance to come where the temple is being cleansed by Yahche, our Lord. All right. Make sure everybody keeps in mind that on the 28th, that you get everything that you need for the feast because that's a regular a regular Sabbath day, so you can't do any buying or selling. And then also on the, the very first day of the feast, you can't do any buying or selling. So you will have to get your provisions before the Sabbath day, and then the feast will run. And after the first day of the feast on the 29th, uh, you can you can work. There's no law that 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 stops you from working. The right. only days that are a holy convocation are the 29th. And also the fifth and the sixth, because the fifth is the new moon, and then the sixth yes. is the last day of the Feast of Dedications, just so everyone understands. Yes, thank you. All right. All right. That so that saves saying? another video. Right. <laughs> Knock that out. All right. Well, with that being said, everybody enjoy your Shabbat day. We bless you in the name of Ahaya, and may he keep you always. Salam. Amen.